Hello there, and welcome to Deeply Rooted. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and we are here together for another series of vignettes where we are being called more deeply into being the spiritual beings that we are longing to be, living out our human experiences through the joys and the pains, helping one another, coming together, becoming the community that we long to be and realizing that we all are one. Our mantra for today is, I am getting to the place of unwavering peace. I am getting to the place of unwavering peace. Owning our story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing we will ever do. Brene Brown. When you think about your life story, what emotions come up for you? Are there more moments that you truly embrace as a source of pride? How can you build more of those moments into your life? How can you take some of those not so beautiful events and work through them in order to come to a place of peace? So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. We've been sharing in these episodes ideas from a book called The Art of Noticing by Rob Walker. 131 ways to spark creativity, find inspiration, and discover joy in the everyday. Today's idea is to document the seemingly identical. A developer named Jacob Harris regularly takes pictures of a blue, cloudless sky near identical squares of blue. He calls the series Sky Gradients. The tight constraints of the project are the point. Harris cites the influence of Dogme 95, a filmmaking movement from the 1990s started by Danish directors Lars von Trier and Thomas Vinterberg. They created a manifesto that advocated the power of story, but was notable notable for its emphasis on restrictions against lighting and filter tricks or other special effects, among other limitations. Harris suggests that his real motive has little to do with sparking creativity. I don't really consider myself much of an artist or this project as art, he wrote in theatlantic.com. I do this as a means of meditation. While sometimes inspired by a fleeting moment of boredom, Harris claims he takes these pictures not to kill time, but to memorialize it, albeit in a pointedly abstract way. Sometimes, he says, he forgets where he took a photograph, or precisely why. Much like writing it down in a journal or throwing a stone into the water, to mark the moment, is also to let it pass, he observes. I also don't, I often don't have a pen and I usually, I'm usually not near rocks or ponds, but I always have my phone. And sometimes, even when I am sad, it's still a beautiful sunny day. I reach into my pocket for my phone 
and point it towards the sky. I exhale and take a picture. My friend Dave Walker has similar pastimes. He takes pictures of telephone poles around New Orleans. Close-ups, details really. Sometimes the image shows the texture of the pole, but sometimes a pole is riddled with staples or touched by an odd dab of paint or marred by a, a bent nail. The colors vary and subtle, subtle patterns appear. I think of Dave when I notice a telephone pole as I'm walking and study it for some quietly hidden visual appeal that he might spot. Sidewalks, parking lots, grass, tree trunks, both human-made features and natural ones offer endless possibilities. Is this something that you might like to try? Documenting the ordinary, the everyday. I remember when I was um, maybe a couple decades younger <laughs> and when I was first following this journey of creativity that I've been on for quite a while now. And I remember reading a book. Um, it was probably like, gosh, it was something I was either listening to in the car and maybe reading alongside um, one of my children. And it was this, uh, there was a scene that was um, an art teacher giving an assignment of drawing the same apple every day for 100 days. And I've always been fascinated by that idea to do something like that. Now, I haven't tried it, but even uh, this um, idea of documenting the seemingly identical seems very much um, inspired by that idea as well. So maybe there's something you've been thinking about that you want to try. And maybe this is the time to try it. Here's an excerpt from the book called Spiritual Direction by Henry Nowen. The topic is the invitation to return. Dear friend, being the beloved is the origin and the fulfillment of the life of the spirit. I say this because as soon as we catch a glimpse of this truth, we are put on a journey in search of the fullness of that truth. And we will not rest until we can rest in that truth. From the moment we claim the truth of being the beloved, we are faced with the call to become who we are. Becoming the beloved is the great spiritual journey we have to make. Augustine's words, my soul is restless until it rests in you, God. Capture well this journey. That I am always searching for God, always struggling to discover the fullness of love, and always yearning for the complete truth, tells me that I am already, I've already been given a taste of God, of love, of truth. I can only look for something that I have to some degree, something that I've already found. All of us have deep inner memories of the paradise that we have lost. Maybe the word innocence is better than the word paradise. We were innocent before we started feeling guilty. We were in the light before we entered into the darkness. We were at home before we started to search for a home. Deep in the recess of our minds and hearts, lies the hidden treasure that we once had and now seek. We know its preciousness, and we know that it holds the gift we most desire, a spiritual life stronger than physical death. If it is true that we not only are the beloved, but also must become the beloved, how then can we get a grip on this process of becoming? 
Becoming the beloved means letting the truth of our belovedness become enfleshed in everything we think, say, or do. It entails a long and painful, painful process of appropriation, or better, incarnation. And this process requires the regular practice of prayer. Every time you listen with great attentiveness to the voice that calls you the beloved, you will discover within yourself a desire to hear the voice longer and more deeply. It is like discovering a well in the desert. Once you have touched fertile ground, you want to dig deeper. This digging and searching for an underground stream is the discipline of prayer. I've come to define prayer as listening to that voice, to the one who calls you the beloved. The discipline of prayer is to constantly go back to the truth of who you are and claim it for yourself. My life is rooted in my spiritual identity. We must go back to our first loves, back regularly to that place of core identity. I've said it often that prayer is listening with obedience, listening with careful attention. Jesus listens with obedience to the Father. He keeps listening to the Father's affirmation. Prayer doesn't mean that you have loving, tender feelings as you listen to God's voice. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Prayer is a discipline. Discipline means to create boundaries around our meeting with God. Our times and places can't be so filled up that there is no way of meeting. So you have, have to work very hard to say, this is the time in which I am with God. Whether I like it or not, whether I feel like it, whether it satisfies me, you go back to the place of solitude with God and you claim who you are. If I am the beloved of God, how do I claim my belovedness? I begin by daily repeating the very words Jesus heard at his baptism, for they are also meant for me and for you. You are my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Spend a few minutes every day in prayer, meditating on God's great love.